Welcome back. Well, Democrat strategist James Carville is resorting to name calling to blast the Republican Party. We've heard this before over the booze and heckling during President Biden's State of the Union address. Well, you know, I told people I have a clue of a PhD in white trashology, and you saw real white trash on display. Hmm. And let me say something about Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene. She dresses like white trash. She really needs a fashion consultant. Could I recommend George Santos? He, he could do a good job of, of dressing up where she doesn't announce her white trash them by her, her own well, clothes. Yikes. Um, you know, attacking a woman's clothes. I, I just think this isn't a good look, Marie. I knew this was coming to me. Um, <laughs> what are you I was debating and then no, I was no, like, it's, it's Marie. You like, made eye contact. I mean, and and the, <laughs> yes. the reporter was like, you know, look kind of horrified. I, de I would not have used this language. I think there's plenty to criticize Marjorie Taylor Greene over and the behavior of, of her and some of her colleagues during the State of the Union. I think it was embarrassing. I wouldn't have used that term, but also like the kinds of things Republicans have called my party over the past, doesn't make it okay, but like the pearl clutching is a little much when people say that my party like hates God and hates the country. So like politics should be better. I wouldn't have done this. Marjorie Taylor Greene was embarrassing. Well, let's take a walk down memory lane and some of the things Republicans have been called by Democrats. The last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking. The Republican Party is basically a domestic terrorist cell at this point. They're starting to look like the jihadists. Not a political party. They're a white nationalist movement. They're a fascist threat to our nation. The party of dupes, uh, party of knuckleheads, party of weirdos, party of freaks. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump um, that, that wants to think that <laughs> That, that Donald Trump's a smart one, and there are y'all, y'all y'all elitists are dumb. <laughs> you, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling, even though my your math and it, your reading. <laughs> yeah, you're reading, you know. I love how that brought Don Lemon to tears. Lisa. <laughs> well, yeah, and he said a, a lot of vile things himself. Also, James Carville is wearing a baseball hat and a T-shirt. Maybe, you know, sit the... Uh, Clothing yeah, comments. He's close to Fetterman there. Yeah, let's not. Let's not go there. You know, I, I'm okay with a little chaos, to be perfectly honest. I and mean, you look at the House. There's 435 members from all different walks of life, representing all different parts of the country. So you're going to get a little bit of chaos. That's what makes the House special. But I, I do want to point out. I, I think Republicans have done a really good job of reopening the House to the public. Right. Of taking things back to regular order. I mean, if you look under Nancy Pelosi, everything was very leadership driven. Now, under Speaker McCarthy, things are now committee driven, allow, committee driven, allowing both sides to have input on legislation going to the House for as, as opposed to just being you know, leadership driven, getting rid of proxy voting. Now you have to actually show up and do your job. Imagine that. So I, I think that Republicans should get a lot of credit uh, for doing a lot of great things in the House. You know, Ari, that language was kind of mild compared to what we've heard from President Biden about not, you know, leaders in the Republican Party, actual voters. He said they threaten the very foundation of our republic. They like anger, chaos, carnage, darkness, and they are a clear and present danger. Yeah, look, I've always tried to practice my politics at a respectful level, not question the other side's motives, and I think that's the way everybody should be. That's how I was brought up in politics, and that's how I'll die in politics, because I just don't care for this. But James Carville, I want to remind you, when Paula Jones accused Bill Clinton, James Carville's boss, of sexual assault, a fact that Bill Clinton pled guilty to, lost his law license over, and agreed mm. to an almost $1 million fine. James Carville said about Paula Jones that if you drag $100 through a trailer park, right. it's amazing what you'll find that turns up. He has a history of doing this. And my advice to everybody in politics is if you're going to use the word white something, is it okay if somebody else uses the word black something or Puerto Rican something or Hispanic something? So if you don't want it to happen to somewhere it's, that you care about, don't use those words yourself. None of us should engage in that type of talk. No doubt. Starting with James Carville. Emily. I'm so grateful that you brought up the historical nature of the attacks that he's levied because to me I see it coming often from the Democratic Party. Why don't then they ask themselves, why do voters feel disenfranchised? Why do members of the Republican Party feel unseen, disrespected, mocked? Why as well, if they are so elite and so much better educated than all of us, why are they acting terribly then? Why are they insulting a sitting congresswoman, not on the basis of her arguments? Why are they not saying, why is she calling the president a liar? Why is she arguing this? Let's talk about it. Instead, they are ripping apart what she wears. Mm -hmm. This is appalling. It is beneath anyone who considers themselves a spokesperson of the party. And I think it's at the root of the fact that no matter what, 
The Democrat Party will see everyone else as less than them. We will never be good enough. We've talked about this before. We will never be educated enough, good enough, smooth enough, rich enough for someone like Hillary Clinton or James mm. Carville or the person that is occupying the commander in chief position in the White House. Well, I sleep happily among the deplorables. So I'll <laughs> take my spot. There. Amen. <laughs> I I'm telling you. your husband. <laughs> yeah, I know you do too, Lisa. I'm telling your we husband you said that. <laughs> well,